Hello everyone and welcome to Strike Art Online, the tournament where it's single elimination. If you die, you are killed. If you, it, People die when they are killed, yes. Um, I'm here with Lyrica and it's going to be interesting because in our very first match actually, we have a very interesting situation. One of the players did not wake up, so it is a 2v3. That's right, Saya. People do die when they are killed, and in this case, it is permanent for the rest of the tournament. Teams are not allowed to field anybody that has been KO'd the rest of the entire tournament. So it's going to be interesting to see how the teams work around this possible handicap, and already a handicap coming in for the side of Marissa Kills Tricky, as one of their players, as you said, did not wake up and has not made it to this tournament, and it has already started. So they're going to go into this already down a player, in a match where if you get KO'd, you run the risk of not being able to play the rest of the time. And so with teams having the option to basically just KO them, exclamation point, uh, and just win the game by having no opponents to deal with, uh, they really have the option to just kind of all out brawl here or pot or try to avoid the damage, uh, which I think is what the side of Laughing Core Flip is trying to do. Not going with the deci deciding to name themselves after the infamous laughing coffin from Sword Art Online, uh, but decidedly not doing the laughing coffin style of just killing them forehead <laughs> and opting for defensive play in two jump characters and an atlas. Yeah, this is a surprisingly defensive comp, but it kind of makes sense if you're so advantaged here. Oh, what a start, by the way. Prize fighter, knife's edge, stacks on stacks. This is going to be so snowball y. And this 2v3 is going to be so difficult. The center is so important, especially on this variant, because if you take it, <laughs> just a standoff here, because Tricky can secure it, right? If Tricky gets banished. Oh, but it's taken by Copycat Works. That's a lot of damage. Yeah, they get to pump out the damage here, Saya. And Marissa and Tricky already looking low. Marissa, having already used the secondary, is not able to heal now. And all three of them can just pressure them with tons of damage. Marissa already staggered by no less than the Iron Spear himself. Uh, <laughs> Goldie Atlas turned forward Atlas in this case as they fight over the center yet again. And this start of Prize Fighter Knife's Edge is really going to make this hectic for the team of Marissa Kills Tricky. As we see the gold just kind of go in there. I think Marissa Kills Tricky actually trying to give up the gold so that they can get their stagger back. Yeah, giving up the goal is super nice, but this is the worst possible scenario in terms of maps, right? If one of them gets stuck in there, it's certain death, so they must avoid it. But it will be very difficult because there are a lot of ways to knock them into it from the side of Laughing Corflip. Sphinx is dribbling, stalling, but the, the scoring win condition is still in effect here. Um, Laughing Corflip could definitely just go for the easy goals in a 2v3 and guaranteed preserve all three of their members for the next round. Yeah, Copycat works, flashing that very quintessential emote of theirs, uh, the I, the knives in the face, I me. <laughs> very uh, poignant of their position right now, as they basically have all the advantage in the world, being able to dribble, gain experience, wait for all their cooldowns to come up to just dump everything into the side of Marissa Kills Tricky. And Marissa almost getting the KO to Jewish Asian there, actually, and the Atlas uh, Cel Celestial Expanse, I believe is what that's called coming out to save him. Oh, Tricky has to be so careful. Marissa gets it forward, looking for the goal here because that will extend their lives for a little bit. Marissa managing to get the save, gets the speed boost to the top side, but Tricky cannot find an angle. And if Tricky gets chipped down, this could be devastating for the side of Marissa kills Tricky as Copycat works looking for the goal, has flip available, does not want to use it just yet. The pillar is amazing from Tricky, but the turret is out. Still saved away. Jewish Asian dropping back to make the save. And again, it's so hard to score in this 2v3 and OV Sphinx who takes it instead. Yeah, Marisha kills Tricky just always on the back foot. Not because if one of them pushes up to try and score, the person that stays back ends up in a 2v3 possibly, or sorry, 1v2, possibly 1v3 scenario. And you still lose the game by losing all the goals. And so how do you even put up any sort of advantage or any sort of pressure when you don't really have a lot of KO potential in Rune now, except Rune banishing somebody near the edge. And you don't really have a lot of pressure with now not really being the greatest core control character. And as we see there, just three people get able to get it around Marissa and score for the goal. What? It's still a constant factor, right? Uh, the side of Laughing Corpse cannot let their guard down. A KO can mean the field is suddenly even. 
and you don't want to lose any members, especially in a round as early as top 16, not even quarterfinals yet in the single elim bracket. You don't want to lose a member here. Yeah, and the side of Laughing Corflip is very much opting just to kind of hang around the center, except when they have their, their dashes up or Atlas uh, ult at, available at the ready. Not even taking the risk here to take the side streets, whereas Tricky is kind of playing with fire, sitting on the side. Knife's Edge helping out tremendously to keep that uh, evasion against Copycat Works dash kills with Aimee, but... Again, Sire, they're just constantly on the back foot here. They have nowhere to go forward, and Laughing Corflip shows no signs of letting them take advantage of that at all. Yeah, it's, it's, it's very, very scary here. And also, I would like to point out this composition. It's a very stay alive sort of composition, right? And they are staying alive, but they can't win. They're, they would just slowly get scored on. It's match point now. Mm -hmm. They're a real only win condition, I would argue. Oh, oh wait a second. They're trying to extend the game. <laughs> I'm not sure if they're trying to extend the game to try and KO Marissa and Tricky so that they can't use them even more so, possibly in whatever racket they end up in. But I think that was just a misplay by Copycat Works. Uh, I'm not entirely sure. I mean, that, that looked very intentional. I don't know what was going on there. Maybe they're looking for the KOs. It's kind of necessary though, because it, it's- Oh, I know what they were doing, Saya. What were they doing? The, that map is not oh, right. the easiest so to right. KO yeah. on, yeah, and so yeah, they yeah. decided to switch maps to find a better place to KO. Oh, you can just score on your- if you have such a big lead, you can just rotate out. Like here too, I think it might be better for them to let it go in on this map. It's, it's just so slow. It's slow, and with Knife's Edge, it's going to be hard to find the KOs on a target you can't see in the shadows, right? And you don't know where they are, and they're very fast with Knife's Edge. See, Tricky here, not really afraid of much, because at any point in time, they can kind of just dodge I mean Blink, really the only thing that can threaten them in the side there uh, with the nice edge speed. So I almost would like to see Laughing Core Flip kind of taking a, a note from Laughing Coffin and just kind of toying, toying with their enemies before they go for the kill. And uh, Copycat Works getting a great glitch pop there off the weird corner of the side streets side there and get, getting the goal. And match point threatened here oh, wait, from Laughing Core Flip. Oh, so much damage on the copycat works. This is an opportunity. Marissa blocks the flip. The flips are all blocked in the favor of Marissa kills Tricky. Can they get a KO? But copycat works is just hiding in the smoke. Regens does not a meter though. Big opportunity for a KO to be made here. If a KO is found, this could turn the entire game around. But copycat works not looking to allow it. Not looking to even create that chance. Still regening. Still not at full stagger. But I, I, th I think the chance is gone. Yeah, Copycat Works and Sphinx, just <laughs> if you watch them, they barely ever go b up or down from midfield and just kind of hang out there waiting for things to happen, waiting for the advantage to swing in their favor. Or, in Copycat Works' case, just kind of hiding out, waiting to just survive, waiting to make sure that they don't get KO'd in this format where they just don't get to play the game. The last thing Laughing Coffin wants, or Laughing Core Flip, sorry, wants is to lose a member despite winning the game and have to go into a 2v3 themselves later down the road. Oh, and they close it out eventually. A very safe win in this first round for them. And they don't lose any members, so looking strong as they move on. A surprisingly uh, non-violent series here, Saya, especially with a team named Laughing Core Flip. Uh, but Laughing Core Flip takes the win, and I believe these are all best of one quick plays, correct? Yep, best of one quick plays. The replays will also be pretty swift. But we should be getting our next round matchup soon as we are just waiting on the team of Ah with at least 10, probably 20 H's, and then they're facing Banished. Yeah, I'm not sure if they're trying to channel the uh, the old screaming goats, if you remember those from YouTube. <laughs> but uh, definitely a kind of the idea here, right? If somebody gets staggered, you're basically just screaming that in their face the whole time, <laughs> trying to survive against this onslaught. Realistically, Staga, or Staga, <laughs> Saya, um, I think a lot of the KOs are actually going to come out in the first level possibly level two. I think I think a lot of it is going to come down to which side has core control, passes it between each other, hits level two, and takes advantage of that two versus, level two versus level one uh, advantage state to try and get the KOs before they can defend themselves, right? The, having that ability to 
kind of snow very similar to league of legends right you know when a bottom lane support and a uh, attack damage carry hit that level six benchmark before the other side hits level six the other side just kind of has to give up space or risk just dying nearly on repeat and snowballing it even worse than before and in this case i think the core control aspect at the beginning of the game to hit level two as fast as possible uh, could mean a huge difference and a huge swing for a lot of these teams going into the rest of the tournament. Mm -hmm. Oh, Maddie's not streaming. I was about to see if their game was ending or not, but I can't really peek and see if something has happened over there. Unfortunate. Yeah, a lot of games have already finished and a couple of them have just started, so I think we just barely missed out on trying to grab another game. I don't know if that top round there, round two, Demon's Raw versus Squirtle Squad has started. Yeah, we're, we're just gonna grab like every single quarterfinal, except the top one. It'll be great. Yeah, these games are gonna go pretty quick, so we might actually be able to just stream everything. The best of one, no, no loser's bracket, just right to the finish line, pretty much. We'll definitely get both semis and the final. But we're, we're just waiting on this one, which is going a little suspiciously long. This matchup between Awe and Banished. I wonder what's did happening. Both, did both teams take Atlas and Null and just try and push for, push for the core control win? Or I wonder if each team is trying to camp and wait for the uh, KO potential. We saw that actually a little bit from Laughing Core Flip, right? Whenever they had core control, they would just dribble and wait for their cooldowns to come up to try and burn them on somebody and get a KO as quickly as possible. Unfortunately, Ju Juno Atlas, not the best KO squad, but can make it work if you can land the abilities. Additionally, right, since we're playing the quick play mode, you can run into some very crazy setups of awakenings, right? Like we saw there, that was probably one of the craziest we'll see with prize fighter stacks on stacks and. Um, Knife's Edge, just kind of alluding to the KO power of many characters and increasing KO power in general. Um, but we could also run into the game mode where Unstoppable is in play. And at that point, it turns into a damage rush. Who can who can get somebody staggered first to get rid of that Unstoppable buff? Uh, for those that don't know, Unstoppable decreases your knock knockback to yourself by, I believe, 90% as long as you're not staggered. And so being able, being able to be that first team that can stagger somebody and rid of Unstoppable's buff can allow you to take advantage in this knockout-focused tournament. Oh, an update, an update on this matchup between Bun Bun Bonanza and Ah. Fiery has died. Fiery has deceased from the side of Ah. It is a 3v2 in the favor of Bun Bun Bonanza, I assume. Oh, that's... That's interesting. Bun Bun Bonanza already... So Fiery was eliminated in the previous game then. Versus Banished. Oh wow, that's gonna... That's, I think that's really gonna hurt them. Because now it's just Maddie and General Twee against the powerhouses of Iliari, Lilybun, and Scyther 12. That's gonna be a crazy match. Are we getting them on stream here? Yep. We yes, we are. Getting them right now. This is gonna be a banger of a quarters. Uh... When everyone readies on stream, smile. There we go. Yeah, this should be a banger of a quarters, especially because it's another 2v3. Um, I'm really, really wondering how the side of Maddie and General Twee will make it happen. Uh, they might have to play an, an, an ultra defensive composition in the form of maybe Atlas now. The problem is Atlas is so slow that you can kind of just beat him up anyways. And with a large, long, long, long cooldown on uh, Celestial Expanse, I, I always forget. I'm just not going to bother calling it that. <laughs> His ultimate. Uh, you can't really rely on it, right? You can get the heal once, but then all the cooldowns come your way two, three, four times before it comes back up. So I think a lot of it's really just going to come down to the Awakenings and how well Maddie and General Twee can take advantage of the awakenings that are present 
to survive as long as possible or possibly just try and KO them as quickly as possible to even even the field. Yeah, we'll definitely see as we load in. This is an East game as the only person who requires a central server. Fiery has been deceased. He is dead. The Brawler player has been taken off. Honestly, shout out to Banished for making that KO happen because this is not a bad team at all. Like, it And it's rare. Yeah, and it's rare for for such, you know, for like a lower seeded team to have such an effect on the bracket, right? Being able to get that KO on Fiery means that they have massively influenced the likely outcome of this bracket. Yeah, and speaking of, a Palmy could not make it for GOAT, so they lost the Convergence because Fudgy Waffles died. So that's another team, GOAT's Esports being taken out early. This bracket is crazy already. Now, I'm, I'm also hearing that Kainub did not wake up yet, so... Demons could be oh, no. the victim of an upset as well. <laughs> it's the it's the day of uh, 4 p.m. plus is good morning, Saya, as nobody seems to be waking up for their thing. And here we have the speed focus quick play awakenings in play. This is spark of agility, stacks on stacks, glass cannon, and peak performance. So everyone's going to be fast, and it's going to be very difficult to get, to KO people that are this fast. Look how fast they're moving, Saya. Yeah, Bumble Bonanza might just opt for five goals as fast as possible, right? Because this Finny Luna combo, especially before they hit the higher levels, isn't really going to get these KOs unless. No, okay. Yeah, I'll just be a first score by Scyther. Bumble Bonanza looking to just do five goals here. Yeah, I think the Nile pick kind of shows their hand, right? They're just trying to stay alive, make sure they can win this 3v2, move on with the rest of the bracket with their three members and try not get beat up by Maddie and General Twee's just absurd damage output in Luna and Fini. Wait, but General Twee in the midfield, clutching up two barriers, looking for the last one. Does have the dash available still, I believe. All it takes is one good primary, but a strike war one by Scyther. We'll send it right past Maddie. It's looking a little bit difficult for Ah here. Yeah, very, very interesting that neither team even bothering for the orb there. Like we said, Bunbun Bonanza just really trying to get these goals as quickly as possible. Get out of this potential uh, potential scenario to lose a member. A Scyther 12, very low right now, has to just back all the way up and get out of the action before they get KO'd. Uh, Lilybun coming in here with a great core flip to take the first barrier, but Liari pushing it back down to Lilybun with the ult, and Scyther 12 pushing up with the turret, but nothing able to come of it. General Twee and Maddie just really kind of just looking for these KOs here, this damage, this pressure, uh, even more so to push these people off these goals and try and defend as long as possible, Saya. All right, now Scyther went with the punch. Can they defend? Can they get enough chip damage is the question, especially if the center can assist in the knockback portion of the KOs, but it's still so difficult despite the high damage characters. Just lacking that third member for the extra damage, the extra prevention of regen makes it so hard for the side of Ah. Uh, and their characters are damage characters. They're not like Juliet where you could surprise dash punch. They're not like Aimee where you could blink and then glitch pop, surprise someone off the map. Mm -hmm. And the... <laughs> it It's very terrifying too for the side of Ah. As, like you said, they have more of su the pri surprise KO factor as opposed to just the pure DPS output of Luna Fini, especially with Fini's powerful secondaries. But Maddie really opting more for the core control aspect of the double takes rather than the damage out aspect. And I'm kind of curious by that. I'm, I assumed that they would have played this composition more to just try and get that KO as much as possible, but with now on the field, it's very, very difficult to do with only two members. Yeah, when this tournament was first thought of, now did not exist, but with the existence of now, she feels like a bit of a must pick here. We looking for the goal, gets the barrier. Wait a second, this 2v3 might just be doable with the heroics from Maddie on the defense. If we can get one good dash, one good play, but Liari is there to take the barrier, maybe to end the hopes of Ah uh, Scyther with to the top side double take as you said the core control looking so good but the flip will end the hopes and dreams on this particular variant one goal separates Bumbo Bonanza from the semifinals and when we look at Luna right she can be kind of a double-edged sword because when you dash as Luna you have to collide into something to stop right and it does have a max range but the max range is almost never 
uh, taken into account because you generally just have to run into a wall. And so with Luna having to force herself into walls with these two characters that can kill so easily close to walls, this pick might come come back to bite General Twee. You have to catch General Twee, that is the question, but they're just looking to score here. Despite any KOs, Maddie still making the saves barely, but still it's looking so, so difficult. Twee looking to try and steal the core away, but Scyther 12 in position. The Ari with the primary, not quite enough. Twee with the Strike War wins against Lilybun. Wait a second. Maybe getting a little bit of a barrier here. Maybe getting a goal with that double take assistance, but no, still sent away by the entire side of Bumbo Bonanza. Now it's Lily Bun passing down to Liari. General Twee sends it through. But once again, it is Scyther 12 with a dash punch. Strike War won by Maddie still. But finally, a slow primary from Liari will secure it. That is Bumbo Bonanza taking it in a very safe five point game. <laughs> Yeah, just a very, very swift, very safe game. Taking advantage of that speed to just kind of overwhelm the two the two members left on Ah, and taking a nice clean win. Interestingly, Scyther 12 actually opting for the siphoning one there, despite the fact that Pummelers would give a Scyther that 30% extra move speed because the the opponent's team is constantly in power play disadvantage. So I think that was more of like a, a, a gentleman's play rather than an optimal pick, if that makes sense. Mm -hmm. But we're heading right into another quarters match. It's Convergence versus Sleepy Hooker. Spencer 2, IDK had to use his name in the team name. And I'm, I'm, I'm apparently supposed to say the entire team name. Uh, which team is this? Uh, it's the lo lowest quarterfinal. <laughs> it's cut off. I can't even read it. Yeah, let's see. Let's see if I can fit this in. Oh, here we go. Sleep. Yeah. Sleepy <laughs> hookers. Spencer two. I don't know how to use his name in the team name. Oh, well, I'll have to <laughs> cut that one off. It will not fit in the scoreboard, unfortunately. <laughs> I'm gonna leave this open so I can say their entire team name because it's just funny. But yeah, uh, sleepy hookers. Uh, open. Open parentheses. Spencer two. I don't know how to use his name in the team name. Close parentheses. It is the team of ZZZ, Hook Resets, and Spencer. Uh, I'm not sure if any of these players have been KO'd on either team yet, have they? Um, I will have to check. Uh, yeah, they're also alive. The first 3v3 of today. Actual 3v3. And my start GG has broken. I need to <laughs> reload it. That is the Afrika tournament. That is not this tournament. Oh, I can't put I can't put Sleepy Hookers in the Twitch prediction because it's not uh, compliant with the guidelines. It's not compliant with. <laughs> you call them Spencer IDK. It's part of their team name. This will be an interesting one too because Convergence actually taking it over Goats Esports due to the two v three disadvantage. That Goats Esports has and Convergence getting a KO on Fudgy Waffles, allowing for the 3v1 to just take over the game. And so now we have a team that looked like they probably wouldn't have been here normally are here now because of the, the way the format of the tournament works. As I believe we're just getting set up shortly here. Everyone's here. Uh, I don't know what server they're going to use. It's probably still in talks right now. Curious which quick play awakening setup we're gonna get. Um, are we gonna get the more KO focused? Are we gonna get everyone's the mayor, where everyone's fast but also has a ton of damage but also a ton of health? Uh, that one tends to not have a ton of KOs come out. The stagger Exodia quick play tends to not have a lot of KOs either. Um, but one that could be interesting is maybe the everyone having the size, the triple size, because then you could have, say, like a quad size. In the goalie could be an advantage, but it can also be a disadvantage, right? Having that much size means you're that much closer to the edge. The center of your character is that much closer to the edge and allows you to be KO'd, KO'd even easier. Yeah, it will depend, but look at this. A full KO comp coming out from the side of Convergence. They are looking for violence here. No healing at all. Yeah, no healing whatsoever. Uh, 
except maybe in the form of Vam Vicious Vambrace, but that is not a team you take and take Vicious Vambrace on. So this team, arguably becoming more of Death La Laughing Coffin than Laughing Core Flip, uh, just opting to sow as much chaos as possible, as quickly as possible, to see if they can take advantage of the format and take it over the likely higher seed than Convergence. But uh, Sleepy Hookers, I need to look up the name again. Sleepy Hookers, Spencer2, I don't know how to use his name in the team name, opting for the more common Fini goalie with the Era X combination. Just a ton of damage from both teams here. A lot of damage coming out, and of course, ZZZ, one of the players most known for that damage, but both barriers are taken away to second of damage disadvantage on the side of the Sleepy Hookers. They are not the ones that are looking to stay alive here. ZZ has no meter. The center has to be taken by someone. It's taken by Maglan. ZZ's got to watch out. No meter to work with. Could be KO'd any second now. Yeah, this quick play start is one of the one of the more neutral ones, I would argue. But Stagger Swagger is present, meaning oh, that's these. Oh, that's good. That's good. That's oh. good. <laughs> save ZZZ. What? The own goal saves ZZZ. Yeah. Okay. They own goal to save ZZZ. What a play, actually. Very, very smart and astute of the of the team of Spen Sleepy Hookers. Spencer too. I don't know how to use his name in the team name. Saving ZZZ's potential death there by just own goaling. Right now they're dribbling, looking for opportunity, but once again ZZ is incredibly low. The damage being focused onto the X and the damage not being found efficiently enough for the side of Sleepy Hooker Spencer to IDK how to fit in the team name. But if ZZ can stay alive, oh no, taking so much damage from the secondary of the Fini. Staying alive though, not getting KO'd yet. We'll have to maneuver around these side streets efficiently. Almost dead ZZ, watch out, you don't have any meter. Sent to the top side, pulled, still staying alive is ZZZ. The own goal might have to come through for the side of the Sleepy Hookers. The, uh, Spencer 2, IDK, how to fit him in the team name. Unless, no Oh, KO. but they get, they get the KO first on Maglin, and now it's a 2v3 in favor of Sleepy Hooker Spencer 2. I don't know how to use his name in the team name. Uh, Grog McFrog also down on Stagger and having to just run away to recover. And Maglin opting to alt F4 out of the game to, to show that they're actually gone. And now, nobody using pummelers on the side of Sleepy Hookers, Spencer 2, I don't know how to use his team name. So no speed boost coming into the advantage here, as ZZZ takes a ton of damage from the ban Vanish combo. And once again, they let the goal roll in because they have the striker advantage. They don't want ZZ going down to a chance knockback in that situation. ZZ was staggered, so they'll just have to play for goals or even just a KO now and just take over this game. Yeah, just incredible usage of the quick play format to save their players when they need to. And now they just have such a staggering advantage over the team of Convergence. Uh, just kind of focusing Grog McFrog. Core just left completely to its own devices. Grog McFrog taken out, killed in action, Saya. Yeah, and they should be able to finish this KO soon. Turtle looking low, has to get out of there. The goal will not be scored. Grog McFrog will just stay there as they are dead. Oh no, hook resets. You don't want to score that one. <laughs> Wait a second. <laughs> the one time you don't want to score, Sai, is the time that you accidentally make the score happen anyway. Uh, but this is probably the worst map for uh, Kilby Turtle. Uh, with extra damage coming in from the pools, ZZZ, Hook Right Sits, and Spencer can kind of just shove Rune wherever they want. With Rune's only realistic escape, that secondary, and yeah, that's game over for the team of Convergence. The all Sleepy Hookers, Spencer, too, I don't know how to use them in the team name, just have to score their five goals with no opposition to face them. Unfortunately, that is how it ends, and I can't, I can't, I can't close the match early because unfortunately you can't use the escape menu as a spectator, and I'm the host of the lobby. It's so over. It's so over, Saya. As this game is over, I just hope they actually score these five goals quickly and don't sit here and do nothing. <laughs> oh seven to convergence as they are completely eliminated from the tournament. Uh, even if there was a losers bracket, which isn't possible when you're completely dead, they would not be there. So, good luck, soldiers, and maybe we can get uh, a revival to come in for you as Kirito may, may eventually save the, the queues. 
But I will say, well fought. They almost had ZZZ. It was just so coordinated from Sleepy Hookers to have the core in possession to own goal at the slightest moment of danger for ZZZ. Yeah, the side of Convergence had a really good game plan and executed exceptionally well. Keeping, I mean, look at ZZZ's level, level four, right? Having to just constantly run away from the damage, try and just survive against the just vicious output of Convergence's team. But Sleepy Hookers, Spencer 2, I don't know how to use them in the team name, uh, just very much taking advantage of the quick play format to save ZZZ multiple times and making it out of this with all three members and the win. Yep, getting it out. And we're heading directly to another matchup, a bit of a collegiate rivalry between Soren and the entire roster of the SLU Strikers, I believe. Integrity Knight Order versus Lightning Flash Asluna. But Soren does have two mightier teammates. The Eris Kitten Club is the Integrity Knight Order for this tournament. And it, it is NX, ZD, and Katsuna, both of whom are known for the KOs as well. Yeah, verified KO monsters in NX City and Katsuna. Known brawlers, uh, Katsuna not a brawler, but still loves to brawl with that Luna pick, and sometimes that Aimee pick as well. Um, versus coin and, coin and trademark. I've not heard of trademark, Saya. Really? But I know. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Honestly, it kind of makes sense because trademark was more well known in beta, was a beta Drakkar one trick, now just a part of the SLU Strikers, and the SLU Strikers are doing quite well in Collegiate. Yeah, weren't they top uh, three, if I remember? I believe they're still top three. I, I don't know. All I know is that they're up there. They're like very firmly up there. Yeah, and with the Drakkar being in play, Drakkar probably, I would argue, one of the one of the weakest he's been in recent months. Uh, just kind of not really seen as the greatest character to use at the moment. Although he seems to still have quite a a uh, position on goalie in some cases, especially on night market, and is kind of a night market demon as well. Uh, just basically winning the strike war guaranteed. But in this case, the strike war doesn't really matter when the real war is against the people on the other side of the pitch. And Drakkar doesn't really get to harken back to his beta days, right? Where he used to just have the kill build of all time and killing people from midfield for, for basically free. And with no adrenaline rush, he can't take advantage of the constant usage of primary to nail those KOs when he needs them. Uh, the team of Lightning Flash ASL Yuna actually going for the coordinated Sony W emotes in their profile icons. <laughs> yeah, it's a bit <laughs> wacky, but you know, they do have that emote after all. Might as well use it. As Katsuna has run into a few technical difficulties and we might have to give them a second because restarting the game has gone wrong. Katsuna is not in the lobby and oh no. Sometimes the game just doesn't work with you, Saya. Yeah, and Coin in the chat is calling you out for saying ASL Luna <laughs> instead of Os Luna. <laughs> hey, you guys are the ones that capitalize ASLU, so... Wait, that's true! Wait, wait. <laughs> you know how it's like St. Louis University, but ASLU sounds like... It looks. It sounds like Arizona, like, yeah, Arizona, like Arizona State, State or yeah, something. Yeah. <laughs> Th so, wait, this name should have been taken by an ASU team. It's perfect. That, it would have been perfect. Because it would be Asana, just like her spelling. Arizona State L University. American <laughs> Sign Language <laughs> <laughs> It's like the Wii U. Also, though, shout out to ASL being one of the best second languages to take, honestly. Really? Yeah. And it's, it's, it's very nice to have... Uh, in many just regular scenarios in life <laughs> as well as being very nice if you have uh, deaf any anyone that needs to communicate using ASL and it's a pretty fun language to learn a lot of, lot of similarities to English although not too much so shout out again to American Sign Language learn it where is Katsuna though? <laughs> now that is the question here Did the brawler Luna and Brawler and recently turned midfielder player is Katsuna. 
It'll be interesting. Yeah, maybe got uh, abducted by Laughing Corflip on the way to the game. Laughing, laughing Coffin, known ambushers, and possibly Laughing Corflip as well. Wait a second. It appears that Coin has predicted on the wrong side. Wait a second. <laughs> the betraying. <laughs> An actual betrayal in the chat. Coin. Your game hasn't even started. You can't. You can't do that to your teammate. Oh, excuse me. <laughs> yeah, this is this is an absolute betrayal here. Um... <laughs> I'm just saying. <laughs> oh man, I think I think Katsuna has been swallowed up by the code. Okay. Un Are, are they are they okay, are they okay, messaging so, okay. you? So, if in one minute fifteen seconds from now Katsuna is not ready, Katsuna is declared dead. There we go. See, that's how you can win the tournament, folks. Just abduct the teammates before they can make it to the game, and they're automatically eliminated. Chatting, streaming, orbing. We've yet to actually see any of the um, awakenings that would make KOing much more difficult, besides kind of the speed one. I mean, it's a lot harder to hit the abilities when everyone's so fast, but it doesn't save you if you actually do get hit by having the speed. So, I'm kind of curious to see if we get one of the more defensively viable uh, awakening starts, such as the, ma the mayoral race, such as the stagger exodia. Um, possibly triple size, but not really. Honestly, Big Fish not really giving a ton of stagger anymore. Not really being a great source of survivability as it is. All right, 10 seconds left, and unfortunately, it looks like Katsuna has not made it. Katsuna is dead. 07 to the fallen soldier, and yet again, another 2v3, Saya. Another 2v3. I was so excited. I was so happy to start. And then, a bam, Katsuna dies. Laughing Corflip has struck and has taken yet another victim. <laughs> <laughs> All right, we're loading in Perrin Test Chamber. Apparently, um,. This is MD Bloor, one of the members of the SOE Strikers. Thought it would be a short tournament. And actually scheduled something 15, 17 minutes from now. So if they move <laughs> on, it's a bit of an awkward situation. Gee, Saya, it's like uh, Omega Strikers tournaments tend to run long or something. Yeah. <laughs> Almost never the fault of the TOs either. <laughs> Okay, this one's the fault of the TOs because we want more matches on stream. But otherwise, the tournament would last, like, what? An hour? An hour, two <laughs> hours tops. There would be no point. <laughs> it would have already probably been over. Yeah, An been orb over. start! Yo, what the in orbs the world? are back! Someone this call is Evil gonna... Do Danger. Uh, and Soren channeling the Evil Do Danger with the with the Atlas, although Pauldrons instead of Evil Do Danger's normal starts. Wait, but wait, wait. The wait. I'm sorry to interrupt you, but this map is winnable. If NXZD gets the center and gets a KO straight away, this is the most winnable thing of all time. NXZD going in, good elusive from Trademark to stop that. NXZD has not hit level 2 and needs to hit level 2 as soon as possible. Yeah, quick play, very, very quick on leveling up, but NXZD only just now hitting the level 2, using the ultimate to actually evade the damage there from Coin and Trademark. Um, smart use of the of the extra elusive in Centauro, and I think partially why NXED chose this pick in the first place. Oh, but can NXED get there? No, it is Zoro who is big. That Giga Blast will be very, very scary as Zoro looks to core control a barrier, but Soren holds strong. One of the best goalies for a reason, not letting Trademark make anything happen. With the Pauldron, he's barely getting tickled. NXED has to be careful though. No stagger remaining, does have a lot of elusive, does have the elusive, but Soren will just own goal, prevent any chance at NXED being KO'd. Yeah, Soren actually had the ultimate there thanks to the two orbs, the two orbs uh, coming into play. But opting for the own goal, saving the ultimate for the for a more necessary save, and NXED having to allow 
excuse me, allowed to regen that stagger from the the goal and keep moving forward without the threat of death. All right, and the special will be burned here, but the chip damage is coming. NXZ has no meter. If that Giga Blast hit, that might have been certain death. Soren will opt to own goal here. Yep. Wait, coin? No, coin. You're trolling. Coin. You threw away the certain victory. Yeah, there's almost an uh, there's almost the idea that maybe you don't try to score or pass back to your teammates so that you can delay the game longer to get the better chance at the KO and the more guaranteed victory as opposed to dealing with the 2v3 scenario where you have the chance that your team could be KO'd. Yeah, especially in that situation, right? When NXZD was, had no meter, was just about to be KO'd, you kind of have to go for the KO there. And NXCD now is putting a bit of damage on coins. Orin can't reach it in time. The goals might be in the favor of Lightning Flash Oslino. But if in any of these points, especially with coin having no meter, if the Integrity Knight Order can get one KO, that can make a difference. Yeah, and I think we're seeing Lightning Flash Aslina kind of play more for the goals at this point, being up three to try and end it as quickly as possible without having, just like Bun Bun Bonanza did, to, without having to worry about losing those members. Zentaro not really a known KO or off the side without people being damaged, uh, but the Atlas could come out and make that KO happen. It's just difficult to, for the Atlas to come out, and then an unfortunate bounce off the bounce out catches Soren off guard for the fourth goal, leading to match point here for the side of Lightning Flash Aslina. Aslina. Yeah, it's very, very interesting here. It all comes down to whether they can make a KO happen, especially with how volatile the KO zones are on this version of the map. Can NXZD do it? But the issue is, look at the levels. NXZD is level 3. Everyone else is much, much higher, and NXZD is going to need to get more touches on the court to be able to survive here. Yeah, NXZD level's not giving you damage necessarily, but if you look at the stagger bars, right, the level 8 coin and the level 10 trademark, just purely outclassing NXZD in HP in stagger, and Zentaro just kind of struggles against people that have too much HP that he can't kill quickly without his usual build setup. But Coin here, very low. The team of Lightning Flash Aslino opting to play slow, using the using the Juliet as the goalie, keeping NXED away. And uh, Integrity Order, Soren trying to s stall, see if we can get a KO, but unable to with NXED being so low. Unfortunately, can no longer own goal. And Coin just knocks it in. A strike war off Soren to win the match here. Nice quick 5 0. All right, Lightning Flash Asuna will advance, assisted, of course, by Katsuna being taken out by <laughs> previously unforeseen situations. But still, they make it happen. Right, and Laughing Core Flip stealing Katsuna away from the side of Integrity Knights. And uh, just kind of proving an, an unfortunate situation for Soren and Spencer there in the 2v3 against Zoro, Trademark, and Coin. Uh, but speaking of Laughing Core Flip, I believe we're going to be getting them on stream now. So we'll see if the side of Demons Rock can take out the, the demons that have been plaguing the uh, Strike Art Online servers and taking out all these members from their ability to play the game. All right. And it appears we're going to get the Sleepy Hookers in the semis before we go to the other quarters, by the way, because of time constraints for SLU. Oh, okay. That makes sense. Also, your replays are from the game prior to the one we just watched. Oh, yeah. There were some leftovers. <laughs> Don't worry about it. <laughs> just ignore. Just ignore. More screen time for um, the pretty good game of Convergence versus Sleepy Hookers. I'll be real. Yeah, the very first showing on stream of the own goalie to save a teammate's life. And uh, just being a, a very good, great heads up play, honestly. Not something that I initially thought about before seeing it myself. Though I really had no intention to join the tournament in the first place, but I think it was a very good idea. And it's proving to be to have some interesting game setups. Uh, Starcade, well known for its ability to kind of create these interesting setups of how to play Omega Strikers a different way and keep it interesting, keep it fresh, and keep the community involved in things such as these silly silly little extra things like Strike Guard Online, like the uh, Boomers vs. Zoomers tournament. 
which had its own share of uh, controversy, but it was still fun to watch, still fun to participate in, and the crew battle really was kind of the highlight of it all. This <laughs> Despite the fact that the Westies or the uh, Boomers kind kind of got <laughs> dumped on. All right, but teams are ready. We're going directly into it. This is the semis. Lightning Flash Osluna versus the Sleepy Hookers. Spencer, to I don't know how to use his name in the team name. Yeah, the side side of Coin Zoro and Trademark having to go up against ZZZ Hook resets and Spencer. ZZZ Hook rats, resets and Spencer showing that they can use the Fini to dump a ton of damage into somebody that they need to secure those KOs and the teamwork to keep people alive as they need to. So I'm curious if Zoro is actually going to opt for a more damage fo or defense focused goalie as opposed to the Kai. Yeah. Whoa. Wait a second. This is such a core control versus damage matchup. Lightning Flash Osluna are just going for the goals here. Yeah, maybe they're trying to take a note of Bun Bun Bonanza and just go for as many goals as possible, as quickly as possible, to just escape the damage through goal scoring. Uh, X Era Finine, not the greatest core control team. Some core control in terms of speed, and Finine has some interesting tricks she can do, but. Oh, and here we see just dribbling between each other to get that level two and have that level advantage. Coin having to move up and try and seal the core away so that they don't get the level two advantage. But the level two advantage already in play. Oh, and, look at that damage! And the damage is just coming in because of the, the level disparity. They don't want to score here, though. They want to get a KO. They need to control the core backwards. Yeah, oh. and, the si and the side of... Exactly. The side of... Uh, Sleepy Hookers, I believe. No, other team. Lightning Flash Asluna just opting for the own goal to save their lives. But this this is the map where if the Sleepy Hookers manage to trap someone, they really need to control the core, right? Coin will try to disrupt it. Zoro going in to try and get a barrier. Gets one, looks for two, almost gets two, but the Giga Blast does not quite get it. But the Sleepy Hookers need damage now. Coin stuck. Coin sends but blinks away. Zoro now looking for the raw goal. Has the barrage in, but Spencer will save it. Zoro, that, Coin, low. That blink from Coin was actually incredible because that Fini ultimate would have killed Coin, uh, but Coin ended up ending up getting becoming oh. slain in the end. And ZZZ with the double KO to kill two with only two goals scored. Now it's a 1v3 for the side of Lightning Flash Asuna. Just trademark by themselves against three and some of the highest damage characters in the game means he is not long for this world and is no longer of this world, Saya. And the Sleevy Hookers take it incredibly quickly. Well played. Yeah, they and they did and they did the thing I was talking about earlier, right? Get that early core control, pass it back to your team, and then just keep passing. Get that level two. Dump that ultimate damage, that having that extra ability into the enemy team and force them on the back foot right out of the gates. And it just worked right in their favor. And they were able to eliminate all three players within two goals of the game. <laughs> Bobinex said, wait guys, is this just battle right? And I think he figured it out. <laughs> There's even an orb in the center to fight over, except it doesn't heal you. Yeah, if we could set the variants, we could set it to the, the orb in the center every time. And then it would be basically just battle right, but like, light. But no orb necessary here for uh, Sleepy Hookers, Spencer 2, I don't know how to use his name. As they just take the pretty commanding victory over the team of Lightning Flash Aslana. Alright, we should be getting out of this one quickly. I gotta send the code to the next team. Unfortunately, no Kirito here to save Asuna as she gets slain. Alright, back to the quarters we go. Demon's Raw. And Laughing Corflip. Yeah, Demon's Raw actually coming out with their main roster to this tournament. But, Kaiyum's asleep. Oh, so it's a 2v3? Yep. <laughs> Can Laughing Corflip eliminate the demons is the question. 
Copycat works in known, basically, IME main, and with no bands, uh, likely going to be playing the IME. And Sphinx, pretty much almost always playing the Juno. So it almost seems like they're going to have to use that, that more, we're going to evade your damage composition to just core control the victory slash defensively. Uh, whereas Snake and Gumi have to try and find a way to even the playing field uh, while also not losing all five of their goals at the same time. I think but they, I'm not quite you sure. Think, I, I think they'll just go their one tricks and just play a normal game 2v3. But if Gumi and Snake can sneak in a KO, like that could be a difference. Well, Gumi, originally known for the rune, might opt for the rune goalie and try and just get an easy banish KO at some point during the, the round and just even it up. All right, we're heading to Dallas servers for the first time in what seems like forever. And this should be an interesting one because Demon's Raw might have what it takes. Well, since we're going to the Dallas server, Saya, we need to put on our Texas accents. I can't do it. <laughs> <laughs> the teams of Demon's Raw and Laughing Core Flip are looking to push forward here for the win in the tournament. I'm not sure how long I can keep this up, but I can certainly try. Should be getting into the game here shortly. Uh, again, as I said, the, the Goomy, Goomy, Goomster, as we like to call them, Goomily, and other funny nicknames, tends to be on the rune in the, in the, fo in the goalie position, and was originally known for the rune, and rune, known one of those characters that can combo off for a KO, Quite, quite consistently, and Gumi, easily one of the top three players in the game, can make that happen as necessary. But Gumi, I think, opting here for the Luna could be based on one of the Awakening starts. I'm stunned. Seems I have stunned Saya with my accent, even though I don't think this is a Texas accent. But I, I somewhere in the South. Close enough, right? Maybe a true Texan can call me out on my bluff. As we get in the game here, it is the an extra special pri rapid fire scene wait, of wait, return. Wait. Extra special. Wait, wait, this is how Demons Raw can still win this video game. If if they get a lucky, if they get level two on Gumi, if they use the crater on someone near a bumper, Copycat works is already low. Wait a second, this could be the win condition. They just need to not let the moan goal. Yeah, G Gumi and Snake finally getting that level 2, and S Gumi showing the power of Happy Star Luna using that ultimate, the Crater, to get those get those KOs, get that damage in on one of the heaviest damage characters in the game. And Gumi just pushing forward, even despite being low HP with that low stagger. And Sphinx and Copycat works pushing forward, trying to keep the core control, trying to stay in the middle of the map to avoid the damage and getting a nice goal here against Gumi. I think we back, went back to normal voice near the end. I think we're safe now. I think everyone can breathe a sigh of relief. But this map, I think, will be interesting, right? The Luna Crater on Copy Catworks, who has no meter. If they can get a KO here, this could be the difference. Truly, it could be the difference, Sai. As Gumi pushing up with Core Flip, Copy Copycat look, works kind of low against the Luna with Core Flip, but Gumi often to use the Core Flip to get it out of the out of the goal there. <gasps> and Snake with the perfect dash, dash punch from midfield gets the KO on the Copycat works, and now it is a two v two, Sai. Two v two, and suddenly the demons are firmly in the lead, right? These players, look at that, Gumi, Gumi just getting the goal. Maybe they'll just score here because they definitely can. seems the chat does not appreciate my accent, but that just makes me lean into it even heavier. I embrace <laughs> chaos. So, as the as the game goes on, my sac accent will become even more sudden. Wait a second, wait, Snake's closer. winning 1v2 with the help Snake of is, Snake's damage output against, uh, against <laughs> Sphinx and Jewish Asian is incredibly high, but Gumi actually kicks it in, despite having the advantage in the HP and likely being able to KO both. Yeah. And now they have to restart from square one. Honestly, I think Gumi should have dribbled there, gotten the cooldowns back, and helped out with like a crater or something, because he definitely could have gotten the KO, but wait a second, Jewish Asian looking low, the regen being stopped by Snake, will have cooldown soon, another punch, the KO by Gumi, this one 
This 2v3 is being completely turned around. Sphinx now is the one who is low, almost KO'd. All they need is one more ability near the edge. And Sphinx still taking damage, getting a barrier at the very least. Snake now defending on the other side. Sphinx stuck in no man's land. Yeah, Snake opting for the uh, for the use for the goaling goaling for the en enemy team, and eventually just getting the dash punch to kill Sphinx off the edge of the map. And it is Demon's Raw's game. Despite being two two of us three at the start of the game, they decided to take the DPS to the enemy team and show we are the true demons of this world. Demons, despite the deficit, make it happen now. They're set up for a matchup against Bun Bun Bonanza in the next round where they certainly will not be going to Texas. This is the Awakenings were definitely in the favor of Gumi and Snake, right? The Happy Star on the Luna and the Rapid Fire, as well as the Twin, twin Drive, means the damage output was just far too intense for the likes of Justin Atlas healing up. And Aimee has the dash with the with a 14 second cooldown and the juno has the dash with the, an eight second cooldown but just not enough to evade all the damage output from a luna with all those cooldowns and a juliet in general wait a second they're losing to the map here the map is outplaying the two members of the demons but snake still unfortunately not able to get it through efficiently finally the game will end sometimes even the best players lose to the map sire all right, but the demons will have to stay here because they're immediately going to be in a matchup against Bumbo Bonanza coming up right after the replays. Um, it's going to be very interesting to see how they do against a roster that is three people again. Yeah, and we're no longer in Dallas, so I can put away my terrible, <laughs> terrible Southern accent. Uh, it usually ends at more Oklahoma because that's where a lot of my family was from. So <laughs> apologies to all the Southerners out there that... While we were like, what the hell is this guy talking about? Um, but yeah, the Demon's Raw roster now has to go up against yet another 2v3, but showing that they can make it happen, especially with probably the start of all time for a Luna and Juliet in the Awakenings. Yeah, that star really helped them out, I gotta say. It made it so that they had so many cooldowns to be able to stop the regen. And of course, picking high damage helps too, picking the Juliet helps too, but really just well strategized and a little bit of luck on top, but what's the luck if you can't capitalize on it? <laughs> I love the replay of them struggling to get around the Atlas Center. <laughs> that was so BM and it was so great. But yeah, this should be an interesting one. Uh, Bumba Bonanza coming up for the semifinals matchup. Weirdly, Saya, the um, this likely would have been the matchup anyway with an actual bracket and an actual game. Although Kainu wouldn't be here too, <laughs> unfortunately for Kainu. So interesting to see that despite the change in styles, these two teams still coming to the this point in the bracket and coming up against each other in the semifinal, what could be seen as uh, winners finals of sorts, right? Yeah. Just a little bit, but in the finals, in the final matchup of this permanent tournament, the Sleepy Hooker, Spencer 2, I uh, can't how to use his name in the team name, await with three players. So if either of these teams lose their players here, um, it will be very interesting to see. Yeah, we have Sleepy Hooker's Spencer 2, I don't know how to put him in the team name, uh, still having all three of their members. So if... This, I, if either if either Demons Raw wins with their full roster, or Bun Bun Bonanza wins but loses a player, they'll both be they'll be at a either team could be at a disadvantage going into the fi final here. So I'm interested to see how these teams are going to pick around the Awakenings that show up, because most of them are pretty well rounded players. In fact, all of them are very well rounded players and can play kind of whatever. And uh, Snake opting for the Juliet once again. Juliet known KO Demon. Not really caring about stagger or any of that, just being able to push you off nearly regardless of what you have. And uh, Gumi opting for the Imi pick here, so I'm wondering if it's like a triple dash start. Um, I think Juliet would be odd for a triple dash start. It could even be the same start of extra special rapid fire, but I think the Luna might also come out in that case. 
It'll be very interesting to see how they, they play this out. And reportedly, um, the team waiting in the finals actually scrimmed the Bun Bun Bonanza prior to this tournament. The quick play scrim is going incredibly hard. And the start is double size heavy impact. The vice of Liari will be incredibly strong, but Liari taking so much damage. Snake taking so much damage. Snake could be KO'd here if any cooldown is thrown out at the right time. Liari, though, stuck in the pit. Oh, Liari's KO'd stuck in. Gumi, Gumi gets the snipe. And Gumi gets the snipe. And just like that, just like that, the Sleepy Hookers are oh, no, feeling Gumi. really good. The Sleepy Hookers are feeling incredibly no. good at the moment. Gumi sealing his own fate there by landing in the in the obscure pool with no HP and basically being forced into a terrible situation against Lilybun, almost taking his own life in that regard. And so now it's just Snake for Scyther 12 and Lilybun. And if Snake gets another KO and it turns into a 1v1, either team goes into the the finals with a 1v3 scenario. Lilybun opting to dribble here to just get HP get stagger get levels over snake and force snake into a bad position oh they're trying to kill ko snake instead instead of trying to go for the win here juliet not the greatest core control character <laughs> as lily bun <laughs> lily bun <laughs> accidentally scores uh never thought we'd say that on stream um, it might but accidentally actually gets be, the score here it might actually be intentional like as, as much as the actual score itself was unintentional like the whole scoring thing thought might be fine to do intentionally because that map is so volatile easy for snake to pick someone off on so own going might be the play or scoring or either of those might be the play but snake getting low here with the damage output of scyther 12 and lily bun scyther 12 really only having punch available and lily bun only really having glitch pop right now uh lily bun actually own barriers on accident and the cooldown's coming up but unable to find the ko here and scyther 12 cleans it up a nice dash punch right into the own goal of Snake, and uh, Bun Bun Bonanza takes it here, but not without casualties. Now being forced to go into the finals 2v3. Yeah, they lose Liari, and that is so devastating. They have a mountain to climb in the finals. A 2v3, as you said, it will not be easy. Yeah, Gumi, unfortunately, having a bit of a misplay in that... Uh, Obscura pool, trying to get the core out, but keeping himself in. Uh, just put him in a bad spot, and Lily Bun able to capitalize and take him off the field, forcing uh, Spent or not Spencer. Why can't I remember Snake? Forcing Snake into the one v two effectively, but Snake was able to turn around and get another KO to make the one v two happen. But in a one v two scenario, Juliet is not going to make it work all that great having very little core control and the KO potential of Juliet is kind of drastically decreased when you don't have a way to force the enemy to the edge of the map to get those dash punch kills yeah I, I see a bit of I see a doubter in chat this format is the greatest thing ever conceived in Omega Strikers I'll be real it is so funny <laughs> it's it's honestly hilarious because it changes the game entirely uh, the core basically vanishes off the face of the earth and becomes a way to save teammates rather than to actually play the game. Uh, almost becoming an orb of sorts from Battle Right, right? You get the orb in Battle Right to, to give your teams some health advantage over the enemy team. Uh, but in this game, you use it to kind of just heal everybody up to full by either own goaling or scoring a goal to make sure that they don't have the, op the opportunity to get KO'd. And so, like somebody said earlier, it's basically battle right with more steps. And I think Sai is busy, so I'll go ahead and, and cover some of the time here. But yeah, the, the side of Bun Bun Bonanza being forced now into the 2v3 because of, of Snake's play, getting the KO onto Scyther, uh, not Scyther 12, was it? I think it was Liari? I believe it was Liari that was KO'd by Snake. So now Liari just being forced into not being able to play the game, being killed, 07 soldier. Um, and now Sleepy Hookers, Spencer 2, I don't know how to put him, use him in the team name, uh, has the advantage going into this. 3v2 on a format where you don't want people to be KO'd you, and you want that damage advantage, that damage potential. Um, we could roll a quick play, though, that does benefit the 2v3, such as the quad mares, or the, sorry, the, the six mares, 
or the stagger builds. Although stagger builds can still run into KO problems due to the power of bulk up. Um, or even possibly the unstoppable. But unstoppable arguably would be a worst case scenario for Bun Bun Bonanza, as they want to try and even up the teams to a 2v2 or even more. And with unstoppable present, it becomes more of a damage race as opposed to a KO race. And with only two members on their team, their damage output is drastically lowered. Mm -hmm. But I will say, this time I will actually close the predictions before the game starts. So get your predictions in right now. Right now, right now, because the teams are getting ready. Get them in right now. Right meow. This is the, the final match of Strike Art Online. Only two teams remain, only five players remain and at the end only one team will stand at the top and everyone else will be dead in game you do not know how much i would love to see it come down to a 1v1 and they just brawl it out they don't even bother trying to score they just brawl it out and see who wins the 1v1 i think that would be the ultimate culmination of this tournament <laughs> All right we're loading in the final four we have arrived Oh no, I said right meow, but I didn't put in my prediction. No. Well, put it in right now. Oh, I can. Yeah, I'll close it like after we see starting awakenings. But only like two seconds after we see starting awakenings. All right, I put in my prediction. I thought it was closed because the timer restarted. <laughs> but Scyther 12 and Lilybun opting for the Juliet Imi combo. Uh, very good KO potential, solid core control as well from the Imi. Uh, just in case they try to go for the scoring and just absolute DPS mania coming out from Sleepy Hookers. Spencer 2, I don't know how to put him in the team name. As we see another Stagger Swagger start here with Fighter Flight and Twin Drive. But Twin Drive on a Kazan, Twin Drive on a Fini, Twin Drive on an Era is absurdly powerful, Saya. And ZZZ and Spencer 2, I don't know how to use him in the team name. He, opting to dribble for that level 2, but Lilybun gets level 2 off the barrier hit, and Scyther 12 is so low already. Power of Twin Drive Fini, Fini coming out here, Saya. Oh, they're both staggered. This is not good. They have no meter left. They are as close to dead as they can get, but they got Stagger Swagger. They are healing up rapidly. Lilybun still has to be careful, though. Getting tagged by the special, having to blink away. The best case scenario is own going here. Scyther? Scyther, opting not to own goal, trying to rely on Lilybun using the Stagger Swagger, likely counting cooldowns there and realizing that they had no realistic way to, to KO Lilybun, and Lilybun correctly reading that likely many more abilities are coming their way and opting to own goal to save their own life. Yeah, Very well played, I think. I was questioning Scyther's decision not to, but when Lilybun owned gold, I think, I think she made the right call, right? There was the... ZZZ Kazan right in front of her face. It was looking very, very dangerous. But Lilybun getting a barrier. Spencer, though, will choose to just score as the KO comes oh. through as well. Best case scenario for the Sleepy Hooker. Spencer, too. I don't know how to put him in the team lane. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Wacky, we have been playing with our play lane too, men, Saya. As, we, as Scyther 12 has been eliminated uh, right at the edge of that goal, Lilybun actually trying to play that last point to, to self goal to save. Uh, Scyther, but Scyther ended up getting KO'd in the final milliseconds of that, that round. And now Lilybun just basically has to spend the entire game running. And really, this is just Sleepy Hooker's... Wait a second! Uh, Lilybun! Lilybun! Lilybun with the hero play! The blink across the other side of the map and just gets both barriers and the goal. If Lilybun takes this 1v3 Sai, I don't think I could... I could contain Wait, it. Wait, and this is the perfect honestly. map too! Because you can trigger the bug where you insta-kill someone off of the bumper. But, oh, the scoring is just too efficient. Lilybun needs to stay alive and own goal or something here. Because staying alive yeah. is going to be very difficult. Unless, wait a second, Hook Resets has to defend. I think I think Spencer, I think think Sleepy Hook or Spencer 2, I don't know how to put him in the team name, needs to try and use their abilities a bit more uh, coordinated. As Lilybun is finding ways around this damage, finding ways to own goal, finding ways to even score against this 3v, this 3v1. Yeah, and if Lilybun can get the center here, it's so winnable. With a turret doing chip damage to it. Oh, but that's not quite... Wait, Lilybun gets Lily it! Lilybun grabs it! But the large size might prove to be a disadvantage against all this damage output. And wow, Lily was so close to dying there. I think if that special hit from 
if that Madden you just sent hit from ZZZ, I think Lilybun actually was KO'd there from the sheer size that she had. Uh, and although she has played this near perfectly so far, I think this is the end of the road. No elusive to work with. The pits have arrived as well. Unless, no, Lilybun does not get the strike. That could have been the difference maker, but Damage Amp gets out of there with the eject button. Lilybun getting the barrier, getting the orb, blinking bottom. And she has an evade. And oh, she has an evade Lilybun and gets the score. that? Lily Bun just going absolutely crazy right now, getting scores in 1v3 scenarios. And yes, maybe Sleepy Hook or Spencer 2, I don't know how to put him in the team name, aren't exactly using their abilities perfectly to gain scores or defend well. But Lily Bun just finding the holes in the defense and making it work, but taking a bunch of damage here. ZZZ opting to use the energy burst to deal damage to Lily Bun, but Lily Bun gets the additional hit here. And I think. <gasps> I think Sleepy Hookers are actually trying to stall the game out to kill Lilybun instead of just win. Yeah, this will be one more chance for Lilybun here. One more opportunity to change this game. Taking chip damage from ZZZ, prevented from regening for a moment. It gets past, but Lilybun blinks backwards. Gets the strike, but ZZZ will finally end the chance at a miracle run here. Sleepy Hookers, Spencer to IDK. Manage to close it out as Ignis raids right after it ends. Really anticlimactic raid from Ignis, I gotta say. No one from the Ignis raid saw the ending of the game. It's over. <laughs> the raid comes in, but all they see is the victory screen for Sleepy Hookers. Spencer 2, I don't know how to put him in the team name. I was honestly really kind of cheering for Lilybun there when she got the big the orb, the arrow orb. Because Aimee with the arrow orb can kill from so far away. Uh, with the with the dash glitch pop combo, but opting to use the uh, size for defense and just unfortunately unable to make it work. But some hero plays from Lily Bun in that set probably plays of all time in this tournament. Not only the own goal saves, but also the double goal against the one v three was just incredible to watch. Is Lily Bun the best player in Omega Strikers because? These 1v3s, the self-scores at the perfect moments to not get KO'd as well were just immaculate. And Lilybun even survives to the end of the tournament, unfortunately losing both of her both of her teammates. 07 to the Fallen Ones. But uh, Lilybun not only makes the 1v3 happen twice, but survives to the end of the tournament as well. So, I think Lilybun is the best player in Omega Strikers history. I will say though, out of all the wild and wacky formats we had so far, I think this one was the most fun, especially because it ended so quickly, right? <laughs> no long tournament runtime. <laughs> yeah, we're actually done before it, the sun goes down, Saya. It's a rare, rare moment indeed. Well, except for maybe you East Coast gamers, your sun's probably already gone. All right. I I I'm just happy. It was so good. We got to see the clutches in the 1v3, but and we also got to see a team Clean it up. Watching Demon Draw go from 2v3 to 2v0 was actually pretty hype too. <laughs> Not having Kainub and still being able to get the triple KO against a team. Looks like chat wants a 1v1. Well, is Sayo Kainub wants. awake? What's your opinion? Is Kainub awake to 1v1? <laughs> you Kind of is not home. Okay, well, <laughs> it's over. I imagine with this new, with the ability to do one v ones, that Starcade will likely opt for a one v one tournament at some point, right? Nope. 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 Unfortunately, we will not because one v ones are incredibly lame. One v threes are cool. One v ones are the most boring thing in existence. <laughs> But you don't like watching Strike Shot X on Out in City, one v ones. I, I don't. I don't like seeing two people <laughs> stand off because the best way to not lose a one v one is to just not lose instead of win. <laughs> you're you're not wrong, Saya. The best the best way to not lose the strike war and thus the goal is to just not strike the core Wait, at no, all. No, no, no. Marissa has a great idea though. We can have a tournament where, depending on how good you are, you either get to have three players, two players, or one player. Oh, that would be that would be incredible. That's, that's so good. That's so. Wait, good. we're just now we're just in a planning stream, side. We're just planning all the future. We have so much time to work with, and that is so bis. <laughs> so bis.
The one a basic pro league tone? versus three gold. Not clickbait. Not clickbait. That would actually be crazy. Uh, Murioku, the the basic strike turning already happened. It was the it was death penalty in Osas using Kazan goalie and never using a single ability for three sets. That goes so hard, by the way. <laughs> that was incredibly hard. All right. Well, I think we'll end it there. I need to go eat breakfast. Sometimes breakfast is at 8 21 p.m. Saya. I usually say that after the stream ends, but like this is like basically stream ending vibes. You know? <laughs> it's just basically stream end vibes, yeah. Um, let's see, let's see, when when we see? Um, enter the Vaudeville tournament tomorrow. It's on Clarion. If you like Clarion today, you'll like it tomorrow. Mm -hmm. And then Westy Wednesdays happen this Wednesday again. Uh, I believe the. Brackets are open for registration. OSAS Week 2 is happening Thursday. Uh, you'll probably see me for that one again here on the casting decks. Hopefully oh. without the Texan accent this time. And Saturday. Saturday is Launchpad, right? I'm not I'm not incorrect. Saturday oh yeah, Launchpad. Launchpad. Yeah, you're right. Sign up for Launchpad sooner rather than later. For those that don't know, Launchpad is the how you get into NAS, NASA, NASL uh, League standings. Give me a sec. I'll throw the graphic. Yeah, bring up that graphic, Saya. We didn't force Ziyoshi Yoshi into free work for nothing. Whoa. <laughs> I take the blame for the other graphic because Yoshi just copied my style and my style sucks. <laughs> this guy's style stinks. There we go. Here it is. Join Launchpad. That's how you get into NASA or NASA. Both are cool. Yep, you know, if you qualify in Launchpad, you make it to Liftoff. And then if you qualify in Liftoff, you make it to Relegation or NASA. And then I forget, it's Promotion Relegation that is actually qualified. Yeah, there it is. So you actually have to win Promotion Relegation to qualify for the bottom four teams of NASA. And the top four teams, I believe, NASA previous season automatically qualified, yeah, correct? Yeah, the top six, the playoff team, stay in NASA. And to get your shot at them, you need to qualify through this long and arduous process. But the process does cold weak from the strong, Saya, and to prove yourself, you gotta go through the gauntlet, just as the other teams have. Yep, but we'll end it there before we lose too many viewers. Yo, the Omega Strikers category is so dead. We need to, we need to raid the one viewer stream, we need to save the category. Raid the single viewer stream. And who might that be, Saya? Oh wait, the greatest meme, we have not... The greatest meme stopped streaming. No, it's dead. Is there a website? It's, it's yes. Jover. Exclamation mark Nassel. There we go. Okay, who do we raid? We uh, raided well, we, last we can, time. We, we can break Yatsumugi last time. We can break the concentration of no cam, no mic, full focus in half and death. <laughs> I don't know who that is though. Um. There's also Rogue the Nobody. This sucks. Make him less of a nobody. Is there anyone else? We raided Drew last time. <laughs> Drew and Yatsumugi are the only ones I really recognize on the current list. I know Ignis was streaming, but then decided to raid us right as we yeah. ended. <laughs> if we ended quicker, we could have raided Ignis and passed the responsibility of finding out who to raid onto Ignis. You know, that would have been so good. <laughs> maybe we maybe we put up a poll. <laughs> Just to have chat decide. We gotta, we gotta shift the blame somewhere else, right? Be like, oh yeah, it's chat's fault. You know what? I'll raid a bister. Might as well. Is it a Bister? Abister? I'm not I, don't, sure. I don't know them. I'll stream because I'm tired. Well, it's time to wake up. Because sometimes 5.25 p.m. is good morning. The, the stream says small stream because I'm tired and got work in the morning. And now I kind of feel bad, but I'm going to press the raid button anyway. Easy clap. Well... I know I had fun uh, streaming this. Oh, we're off stream. 